And there came a time known as the third millennium, a time when the people of the earth were ravaged by disease, pestilence, and poisons, a time when the horsemen of the apocalypse ran the multinational corporations, a time when America's citizens were waking up to a future of no money and no jobs. A time when a special man came forward, a man that your American taskmasters did not want you to see or hear, a man whom they took prisoner and hid away, a man whose name is Yahweh Ben Yahweh. For telling people the truth, Yahweh Ben Yahweh was taken prisoner by the minions of darkness. For giving people hope, Yahweh Ben Yahweh was led away to Golgotha. This is the continuing story of the past and of the future, about good and about evil, about your life and what it will become, a story that tells why the so-called black man of America had to suffer for over 400 years, a story of what will happen to the so-called black man if he returns to the laws, statutes, judgments, and commandments of God, you hey wav hey. Olam, Olam shall, shall you hey wav hey. hey. The, universe the universe of you, of you hey wav hey. Wav hey. hey. Brought, Brought to you, to you by, by the nation, nation of you hey wav hey. Wav hey. Working Work for you and your future. Good or evil, life or death. This is your choice in this, the year 6002, the year of judgment. Shalom and welcome to the universe of Yahweh. My name is Josiah Israel and I am your host. For over seven years now, we have been discussing some of the things the Bible said would occur in the day of judgment. We warned you that the weather was going to change and that the powerful forces of nature were going to bring terrible destruction upon America and the world, and that it was going to get worse and worse and worse, and it has. We alerted you that violence in the public schools was going to increase, and it has. We showed you in the scriptures that forewarned of wickedness in high places, and we are witnessing today gross misconduct and serious crimes being committed by some of our highest elected officials. What lies ahead for America and the world is nothing less than the proliferation of deadly diseases and plagues as foretold in the Bible. But there is hope. The Bible tells us that at the end time the Messiah would be revealed, and at that time he would save the righteous from this impending destruction. That one the Messiah is Yahweh Ben Yahweh. So we invite you to join us in the universe of Yahweh, featuring the commandments of Yahweh and the Messiah revealed. First, the commandments of Yahweh. For 6,000 years, we have been suffering at the hands of rulers who transgress the laws of yud heh wav -Heh and teach all people throughout the earth to transgress the laws of yud heh wav -Heh. In order to have peace, love, and harmony upon the earth, we must return to keeping the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of yud heh wav -Heh. All of us have been taught that the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do not count today. In this series, we will show you that the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do count, and that if we govern our lives according to these commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of God yud heh wav -Heh, then we will have peace and goodwill upon the earth forever. We invite you to study along with us 
However, in order to do so, you must have the following tools. A King James Version of the Bible, several dictionaries, the New Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, a set of encyclopedias, Hebrew and Greek lexicons, a thesaurus, and a synonym finder. Shalom. My name is Ben Kayo Bethel Yisrael. We are discussing the commandments of Yahweh. More specifically, we are discussing the first direct commandment that Yahweh ever gave to man. That first commandment was given to Adam, which was to dress the Garden of Eden. We have told you that the word dress in Hebrew is abad, spelled from right to left, ayin, bait, dalit, and it means worshiper. Worshiper is equivalent to celebrant, and celebrant describes a person who celebrates. By definition, celebrate means to observe a day or commemorate an event with ceremonies. So worshiper, as it relates to dress, means that Yahweh commanded Adam, his descendants, and all families of the earth to obey, comply with, or conform to, as law, the observance of the seventh day as the Sabbath of Yahweh, to reflect upon and to honor the memory of Yahweh for all his work which he, Yahweh, created and made. So let us review how all of this relates to what we discussed before our interruption with our three-part special of judicial murder. We read Isaiah chapter 56 verse 2 and learned that we are blessed when we keep the Sabbath from polluting it and keep our hand from doing evil. We define the words polluting and evil, and from these definitions, we set forth the fact that we are blessed when we keep from making the Sabbath inferior by changing it and keep our hands from transgressing the laws of Yahweh. We expressed that when we do these things, changing the Sabbath and transgressing the laws of Yahweh, we are profaning the Sabbath day, which means we are doing things that are not dedicated or devoted to the service of Yahweh. In addition, we read in Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 31, that if the people of the land bring ware or victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, we are not to buy it of them. We defined ware as any piece or kind of goods that a store, merchant, peddler, and so on has to sell, or any skill or service that one seeks to sell. We defined the word vittles as articles of food, especially when prepared for use. The word article was defined as a thing for sale. We pointed out that even those stores, merchants, peddlers, restaurants, business offices, and the like are open for business to sell their goods, services, or skills on the seventh day, the Sabbath of Yahweh. Yahweh commanded us not to buy any of their merchandise, food, skill, or services on His holy day. On the seventh day, the Sabbath of Yahweh, we are to dedicate and devote this day exclusively to reflecting upon and giving honor to the memory of Yahweh for all His work, His wonderful creation, which He, Yahweh, created and made. Today, we will continue our discussion of dress with respect to Adam, his descendants, and all families of the earth, bringing their actions into full harmony or agreement with the laws of Yahweh by practicing and keeping the Sabbath of Yahweh. Before getting into the specifics of our subject today, 
Let us review a few things. The seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh, according to Exodus chapter 20, verse 10. One meaning of Sabbath in Hebrew is to repose or to cease. Repose means to be at rest as from work or activity. And cease means to come to an end. Yahweh gave us six days to labor and do all our work. But he commanded that on the seventh day, the Sabbath of Yahweh, all work and all activity must come to an end. Yahweh set aside the seventh day, the Sabbath of Yahweh, as a day for Adam, his descendants, and all the families of the earth to rest and refresh our minds in the knowledge of Yahweh. Even more, this is a day set aside for us to give exclusive honor to the memory of Yahweh for all his work, his creation, which he, Yahweh, created and made. Yahweh not only commanded Adam, his descendants, and those who joined themselves onto Yahweh to keep the Sabbath day, but he commanded that the land also keep a Sabbath unto Yahweh, according to Leviticus chapter 25, verse 2, which reads in part, When ye come into the land which I, Yahweh, give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto Yahweh. The land keep a Sabbath unto Yahweh? How is the land to keep a Sabbath unto Yahweh? The answer can be found in Leviticus chapter 25, verses 3 through 5, which reads, Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard, and gather in the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for Yahweh. Thou shalt neither sow thy field, nor prune thy vineyard. That which groweth of its own accord of thy harvest thou shalt not reap, neither gather the grapes of thy vine undressed, for it is a year of rest unto the land. The word sow means to plant seeds for growth. Just as Yahweh commanded Adam, his descendants, and all the families of the earth to do all our work in six days, he, in like manner, commanded us to plant our fields, prune our vineyards, and pick our fruit in six years. And just as the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh unto us, and absolutely no work is to be done, likewise the seventh year is a Sabbath of rest unto the land, and we are not to plant seeds for growth, prune our vineyards, and pick our fruit. Even more, anything that grows on its own accord in the seventh year, we are commanded not to reap, nor to gather it in. For every seventh year must be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for Yahweh. If man would practice and keep the laws of Yahweh as found in the Holy Bible and let the land rest every seven years, Yahweh would bless the land and it would produce and yield abundantly and we would have absolutely no famine upon the land. Now we know some of you are asking in your mind, since we can't plant our fields, prune our vineyards, and pick our fruit, not even that which grows of its own accord, then what will we have to eat in the seventh year? Well, join us next week, and we will answer that question for you. I bear witness to you today that the Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh, is here. I bear witness to you today that the Mahdi is here. 
I bear witness to you today that Shiloh is here. I bear witness to you today that the great light is here. I bear witness to you today that the Grand Master of the Celestial Lodge, Architect of the Universe, is here. I bear witness to you today that the Enlightened One is here. I bear witness to you today that the One all religions have been speaking of for almost 6,000 years is here. Thank you for listening and join us next week as we continue our discussion of the commandments of Yahweh. to Exodus, release our God to us. It was prophesied that when the Son of Man appears, there will be wars and rumors of wars, pestilence and disease, a time of great and terrible natural disasters. This is Judgment Day, and yud he wav -He is plaguing and judging this world. He is pronouncing a more severe judgment on America because this country is holding his son, yud he wav he beit nun sofi yud he wav he captive for crimes he did not commit and refuses to let him go. A divine plague is an agent of destruction, such as wars and pestilence, floods and fires, earthquakes and erosions, famine and diseases. This year is turning out to be the greatest year of physical disasters for America. Torrential rains, unyielding snow, forceful winds, severe drought, and crop diseases are taking a severe toll on the United States. The greatest drought since the Dust Bowl days of the 1930s now has a major part of America's grain and livestock producing regions in a stranglehold. Drought is a condition wherein there is a severe and continuous lack of water. The scorching drought destroyed $3.6 billion in crops and livestock in Texas and Oklahoma alone. The severity of the drought, the worst on record, has pushed thousands of farmers on the Great Plains to the brink of financial ruin. Who has the power to call for a drought? Let's read Haggai chapter 1, verse 11. And I, yud he wav -he, call for a drought upon the land and upon the mountains and upon the corn and upon the new wine and upon the oil and upon that which the ground bringeth forth and upon men and upon cattle and upon all the labor of the hands. Is it possible to avoid drought in America? Of course it is. And yud he wav he beit nun sofit yud he wav he holds the key. However, until the release of yud he wav he beit nun sofit yud he wav he, this drought that's plaguing America shall endure. And the present course of natural disasters worldwide shall continue to get worse and worse and worse. Shalom, and we'll see you next week on Exodus. Release our God to us. Who 
is worthy? Who is worthy to open the book? Who is worthy to open the book and loose the seals thereof? And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one likened to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. At the end of time of evil rule, the Anointed One, the Messiah, shall appear. In 1979, Yahweh Ben Yahweh came to Miami and became the spiritual leader and founder of the nation of Yahweh. Although he took a vow of poverty, in seven years he guided the nation to amass a $250 million empire. Under his direction, the nation of Yahweh has grown to encompass disciples, followers, and supporters in over 1,300 cities within the U.S. and 16 foreign countries. Yahweh Ben Yahweh is bringing about changes in the lives of individuals and is giving the world the keys to success in life politically, economically, educationally, socially, and spiritually. We are revealing the work character and purpose of the Messiah who is judging the lost sheep of the house of Israel and the world with righteousness and the poor with judgment. The government of Yahweh, the kingdom of Yahweh, is bringing peace to the people. Yahweh ben Yahweh is judging the poor of the people. He is saving the children of the needy and is breaking in pieces the oppressor. For they shall fear Yahweh ben Yahweh as long as the sun and moon endure throughout all generations. The oppressors of Yahweh ben Yahweh is coming down like rain upon mown grass, as showers that water the earth. In the days of Yahweh ben Yahweh shall the righteous flourish, and abundance of peace so long as the moon endures. Yahweh ben Yahweh has dominion also from sea to sea, and from the river unto the ends of the earth. They that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him, and his enemies shall lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish and of the isles shall bring presents. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall offer gifts unto our king Yahweh ben Yahweh. Yes, all kings shall fall down before Yahweh ben Yahweh. All nations shall serve him. For Yahweh ben Yahweh shall deliver the needy when he cries, the poor also, and him that has no helper. He shall spare the poor and needy, and shall save the souls of the needy. Yahweh ben Yahweh shall redeem their soul from deceit and violence because precious is their blood in his sight. And he shall live, and to Yahweh ben Yahweh shall be given of the gold of Sheba. Prayer also shall be made for him continually, and daily shall Yahweh ben Yahweh be praised. Psalms chapter 72, verses 2 through 15. The name Yahweh shall endure forever. His name shall be continued as long as the sun, and men shall be blessed in Yahweh ben Yahweh. All nations shall call him blessed. Blessed be Yahweh, the God of Israel, who only does wondrous things, and blessed be his glorious name forever. And let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Psalms chapter 72 verses 17 through 19. Remember, 
that this is the morning of the third day, and I shall rise again. I am the resurrection. It, all of prophecy tells you that I shall rise again. It's all about that. Luke chapter 2, verse 34. No doubt about it. Again, I love you forever. Bless you forever. I remind you once again, my associates are children of the light. <laughs> that just brings uh, laughter to my heart, to my soul, to realize that at last, I have those of you that love peace, and I only want to be in the presence of those of you that love peace. I love you forever. Shalom Aleichem. The day of Yahweh ben Yahweh draws near, and in that day he shall judge all nations and all people, whether we are of the ruling class or the ones being ruled over. Yahweh ben Yahweh shall set judgment in the earth. The kings shall offer Yahweh ben Yahweh gifts. The poor and needy shall be delivered by Yahweh ben Yahweh. But the oppressors and enemies of Yahweh ben Yahweh shall be broken into pieces. Yahweh ben Yahweh shall be called blessed. For in this day the righteous shall flourish and the abundance of peace shall endure forever. Thank you for joining us in the universe of Yahweh. And now we'd like to invite all of you to pray with us as we turn to the east with outstretched hands and say a prayer to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew. Come, let us pray. Tefillah, Ave Nu Shabbat Shemayim, Yikardesh Shemayaka, Tavo Malkuteaka, Yiaseh Zonka. Kivashamayam came Baaretz et Lekum Kukenu, Tain La Nuhayon, Ushlak Lanu, Ah Kati Enu, Kimosha Sol King, Gamanaknu, La Koteum Lanu, Veal Tefienu, Lade Nisayon, Kim Kal Senu, Minhara, Kilaka, Hamamlaha, Veha Gibara, Veha Tiferet, Leolame, Olamin Sila. We thank thee, O Yahweh, O living and eternal King who has so mercifully restored our souls within us, Selah. Praise Yahweh, and always remember that the Father, Yahweh, and His Son, Yahweh bin Yahweh, love you, and your host loves you too. Shalom Aleichem. To order the companion book to the series, The Messiah Revealed, call 1-800-967-PEACE. That's 1-800-967-7337. And when you call, ask about the special discount on Yahweh Ben Yahweh, the Lamb of Yahweh. Videos of this program are available. When ordering, please refer to the program number on the screen. You can now access the divine mind of Yahweh Ben Yahweh on the internet at the address on the screen.